Rashad Landi lives a quiet life with his wife on a Lake Manitanka and Excelsior, a Minnesota, but he has a story to tell. A story of love, adventures, and complications. It all started almost 70 years ago in Egypt. Egypt just went through a military coup by the free officers toppling King Farouk, and Egypt was about to see a new life. Starting his new life at the American University in Cairo, Richard met the young Egyptian movie star Lubna Abdul Aziz. There, where our story begins. He sat down with me, talking about his memories almost 70 years ago, his memories in Egypt, and his relationship with the beloved movie star, Lubna Abdul Aziz. It, this was 1952, and I was born in, in, uh, 20, in 32, so I was 20 years old. Um. What did you know about Egypt before you, uh, you, see, you actually saw it? Uh, very little. <laughs> I knew there were pyramids and a sphinx, and uh, I, knew, I knew that the king had just left, and I knew that it was a, it was a very positive time in Egypt. People were f happy about what was happening. S then we believed that Mohammed the Gib was the he was the general and the front man, uh, but the, uh, his colleague came to the university. Uh, uh, I'm forgetting his name now. Uh, Nasser? Nasser. Oh. And I shook Nasser's hand. You so, had? Yeah. And you lived, you lived to talk about it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, then everybody was really pro-Nasser at the time. Even uh, yeah. inside the AUC? Yeah, yeah. 20 years old, uh, coming from California, you're not politically, you know, uh, right. involved. You're just going to Egypt out of curiosity. Yeah. So what was the life inside the AUC at the time? Who? Was well, it seemed to me that, yes, the people who, who could afford, the Egyptians who could afford an, edu an English education in England or a, or a French education in Paris, they sent their kids to Europe. If you couldn't quite afford that, then they sent their kids to the American University and to get a Western education. And then I, uh, my roommate was, uh, was uh, Louis Grace. Grace. Who, who went on to become a very important journalist. He was a Coptic Christian and uh, he had been sent by the church to an international conference in India before that. But Lewis was very good for me. He took me to Coptic churches. How was the people on the street, the people you meet, places you go when, you know? Uh, people were very, very welcoming. When they you know you are an American. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. The, the, the shoeshine boys on the street always managed to pour a little stuff on my shoe so they'd have to clean it. I was invited to people's homes and uh, to some parties. And uh, one of the Egyptian women took, took us to see a belly dancer, which wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's life as a young American uh, in American University in Cairo was going very well. He met President Nasser, he was roommate with a great uh, journalist, uh, Lewis Grace. He uh, slept on the top of the pyramid. Would sometimes drive to the pyramids because it was a lonely, quiet place. And we would, when a car would drive up, we would say, Ahlon <laughs> wasahlon, meaning you are welcome in my home. I see. And the cars would leave. Because <laughs> <laughs> there is something yeah, going on something there. Something going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. How a young American student at the American University in Cairo happened to meet 
ذا موفي ستار مبنى عبد العزيز and when she was a student at the university mm-hmm. and she had a a children's program on the radio she was anti anti lulu <laughs> and uh, i remember when i left at the end of the school year and went and flew to uh, amman uh Auntie Lulu said goodbye to Uncle Richard. <laughs> Richard's social life at AUC was in a way limited. One day, he asked Lubna Abdul Aziz if she would go with him on a date. She agreed. The dates started like all dates, a dinner, a movie, then things got complicated. Mm -hmm. So we decided it would be best since it was not proper for her to be going to a movie with her, with me, that if we went clear across Cairo, a long way from the university. And we went and we were sitting watching the movie. And just as the movie began, the chairman of the Egyptian State Broadcast Corporation, he came and sat down right in front of us and he turned around and bowed to Lumna. At which point she went this way and I went this way because she was very frightened. And I met her on the street. Why was she frightened? Because she should, he would assume that if she was going to movies with me, she was also going to bed with me. Did you? No. And so I, I met her on the sidewalk and she was in tears. And all of a sudden there were about 15 men around me yelling at me. And they were shouting that I was a rapist or something like that. And so Lubna finally got angry at them and told them to be quiet. And we got into a taxi cab. And it was decided, where will we go? So I said, well, we'll go to the pyramids. What else? (laughs) Yeah, what else? So we were in a residential area on the way to the pilgrimage, uh, to to the pyramids. I put my arm around her in the back seat of the cab and the cab driver stepped on the brakes and started yelling rape 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 (laughs) and so she yelled at him and then we walked home from there (laughs) that's not a good date so far not a good date and I have always dropped her name and it always makes me more important than I am. <laughs> After finishing his school year in AUC in Egypt, Richard came back to the United States, living in New York, studying. Few years later, he learned that Lubna Abdul Aziz in the hospital in California. So I made arrangements to fly from Los Angeles, from New York to Los Angeles in order to go see her on my way home. And when I saw her, she was not a very happy young woman. She didn't feel well. And somehow she thought I could get her out of the hospital and take care of her. Well, I couldn't do what she wanted me to do. And so we didn't leave in the best of moods. And then when I came here to Minnesota, I learned from some people that Lubna was here and that she was married to a doctor and that she lived uh, in St. Paul or somewhere like that. Richard was reluctant to call Lubna Abdul Aziz here in St. Paul. He was afraid. But then I was afraid my story would get ruined. (laughs) That she didn't want to say anything about me or she didn't want to talk to me. And then, about the time I would got up enough nerve to go see her, she had left. I thought, you know, she doesn't want to have anything to do with little Richard, you know. <laughs> so I just kept the story pure. 
And that was the last time Richards seen Lubna Abdul Aziz. Almost 70 years went by. He never contacted her. He never tried to see her. Richard kept his love affair with a young Egyptian movie star, Lubna Abdul Aziz, for almost 70 years. Yeah, I don't, it was a good memory and I didn't want it spoiled. <laughs> That's beautiful. And uh, so sort of like when I look at a picture of a video about her now, I don't enjoy it because she looks very sophisticated and very harsh. Lots of makeup, uh, and I knew I remember this nice, innocent, innocent little girl, young. Girl. This is the story of the American who dated Egyptian movie star Lubna Abdul Aziz and after almost 70 years he's telling his story. So when he tells you about Lubna Abdul Aziz's uh, girlfriend, yeah. so what do you think? Oh, that's what kids do, that's what people do when they're 19 and 20 and you, you know, I mean as far as the, what happened because of the differences in culture, you know, it's like, wow, that's so different than anything here. I'm 88 now, and uh, I'd like to be at least 90.